Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. If any one of us is serious about getting well and being a really victorious Christian, please listen to what I'm going to say. You will need one thing, and if you will not do this one thing, then nothing else that anybody does for you is ever going to work. One of my favorite things about the character of God is that he's always just. Life is not fair, but God is just. Amen? Now, I don't believe that God just wants you to be hurt and live hurt. I don't even believe that God wants us to be healed and just live healed. I think he wants us to go on to step three, which is now I'm ready to help other people. So if you really want to make the devil mad and get him back for everything he did for you, you say, I'm not going to live wounded my whole life. I'm going to receive healing, but I'm not even going to stop there. I'm not just going to sit around and enjoy my good feeling of healing. I'm going to spend my life helping other people realize that what God did for me, he can also do it for somebody else. You know, you can put an end to generations of devastation if you'll be the one that will draw the bloodline of Christ across your life and say, this mess that came from my parents to me is not going from me to my kids. Don't pass it on. Now, emotionally unhealthy people have been wounded in their soul and they've never been properly healed. What is the road to healing? Well, I just wrote down a few steps here. Number one, believe God can work out anything that's happened to you for good. That's the first thing you need to believe. No matter what's happened to me, God can work it out for good. And if I were you, I would live with that belief every day of my life. Second, totally forgive. We've talked about that. Number three, renew your mind. If you've been hurt really bad, I can promise you that you don't know how to think right. Sorry, but you just don't. Not trying to be insulting, but you don't. There's no telling how many people that love God, their minds are so messed up and they believe all these lies the devil has told them, like you can never overcome this, you're never gonna be any good, you're used merchandise. I spent so many years of my life with a shame-based nature, I was ashamed of not just what my dad did to me, but I was ashamed of me because he did it. And I had a constant record playing in my head that, that just had, it was a one-line song, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me, What's wrong with me? Have any of you ever heard that? What is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? Why am I not like other people? What's wrong with me? And you know what? I never hear that song playing anymore. Never hear that song anymore. Amen. So renew your mind. And let me tell you something about renewing your mind. It's work. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you want to be a really on fire victorious, more than conqueror Christian that God can use is going to take some work and some effort. And you know, just so you know, we're saved by grace and everything that comes to us comes by grace, but grace is in no way opposed to making an effort. What grace is opposed to is earning, thinking that by what you do, the effort you put out, that now you deserve something from God. We will never deserve anything from God, but we make an effort to be all that God wants us to be because of what he's already done for us. I make an effort every day. Every day I carve out that time that I need with God. Every day I have to discipline my mind. Every day I have to discipline my mouth. Come on. <laughs> Every day, I have to be ready to not live offended. <laughs> every day, every day, every day, every day, every day. Oh, maybe once in a while, if I stay home totally by myself with nobody but the dog, I can not, you know, <laughs> not have to put out such effort. But honey, when I get around people, I can get along with everybody till the people come home. <laughs> and I've even got some great people in my life. 
Receive mega doses of God's love for your emotional healing. Oh my gosh, you gotta learn how to just swim in the love of God. God loves me, loves me, loves me, loves me. God loves me, loves me, loves me. Go look at yourself in the mirror and say, God loves you. <laughs> Don't determine your value by how, by how people have treated you. And then understand the nature of emotions and learn how to manage them instead of letting them manage you. Just because you feel something doesn't mean that it's something you get to do. Now, are you ready to exchange beauty for ashes? If so, you've got to give up the ashes. Now we're going to look at some scriptures that, I don't know, if you listen to me all the time, you may be fed up with hearing about this crippled man in John, but <laughs> Dave just tells me sometimes if, if we have to do the crippled man one more time, I'm glad I'm going to Madagascar. I haven't been there, and I can talk about the crippled man all I want to, and nobody will know. And then I'm going to go to Namibia and talk about him again, because this, this guy is like the classic example of where we're at. <laughs> is there anybody here who has never heard me preach about the crippled man in John 5? Awesome. Dave said, one of these days, you could just do a whole crippled man series. He said, you could just, because I also tell a story about me racing a crippled man at McDonald's for the last booth. So he said, you could have the crippled man at McDonald's, the crippled man in John 5. You could just do a whole crippled man teaching. And no, I'm not telling you about the crippled man at McDonald's. That goes with another story. All right, John chapter 5. You just have to, maybe you need to hear it again because you didn't get it the other 12 times you heard it. I don't know. Now, here's the deal. I'm just going to tell you about the first part of this, and we're going to look at just a couple verses. There was a pool in, let's see, where the pool was. <laughs> it was near a sheep gate, and it was uh, Bethesda. And it had five porches, like openings, where you could go through these archways and be by the pool. And around this pool, there lay all kinds of crippled and sick people all year long because once a year, once a year, an angel came and stirred the waters up and whoever got into the water first, one person, once a year, got a miracle. Now, you know, sadly, I think that's what a lot of us do. We just kind of don't do anything else all year, <laughs> but lay around hoping that we're going to be the one person that gets a complete breakthrough and doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, this time you're going to get it. I believe you're going to get it this time. And um, verse 5, there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated and a lingering disorder for 38 years. Let me ask a question. How long have you had your mess? Ooh. When Jesus noticed him lying there, helpless, knowing that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to the man, I love this, do you want to get well? Are you really in earnest about getting well? Now, let me just stop there for just a minute and say to you, did you come to this conference just to see what I look like when I'm not on TV? <laughs> or did you come because you really want to press on with God? And can I tell you something? Anytime we move on to something better, we've always got to leave something behind. So I just simply want to say, are you really serious about the changes in your life that you need? Are you ready to change instead of just wanting God to change everybody else that's around you so you can have a better life? Well, you know what? If you mean it, 
then God can give you beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You can become the planting of the Lord, a tree of righteousness, glorifying God every single day of your life. If you're really serious about getting well. Now, let me just say this for just, just maybe two minutes. If any one of us is serious about getting well and being a really victorious Christian, please listen to what I'm gonna say. You will need one thing, and if you will not do this one thing, then nothing else that anybody does for you is ever gonna work. You will need to learn how to study the Word of God. I don't think that you can just be spoon-fed victory. I'm grateful that you enjoy my TV program, and I pray that you'll watch every day. I'm so grateful you came to the conference, but I'll tell you, you need your own personal study time, you, your Bible, a notebook, the Holy Spirit, because I am a teacher, the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And I can give you a piece of the puzzle. You can maybe go to church tomorrow morning. Your pastor can give you a piece of the puzzle. And that's great. You need all of us. God gives the ministry gifts for the building up of the body that they might, might go out and do the work. But nothing is going to replace your time with God. If you were to ask me what is the one thing that I do that I believe, if, if I could say there's anything that I do that helps me be the person I am and do what I'm doing, I would have to say that it's my daily morning time with God. And I'm not saying that something spectacular happens every day. Matter of fact, I would say that most of the days are just frighteningly ordinary. But I'll tell you what I believe, and I believe this with all my heart. I don't think it's what I do in that time that makes that much difference. I think the thing that honors God is that we go to him and we give him the time. Because by doing that, we are saying, I cannot do anything worth doing without you. And any person who is too busy to spend time with God is too busy probably doing nothing that's bearing any good fruit in your life. And I'm not saying this to make anybody feel bad. It's one area of your life where the devil will fight you more than anything else. It petrifies him to think that you might actually get to know God for yourself. Come on, you cannot have secondhand faith. You need your own relationship with God, your own experience with God. There was a certain man there who'd suffered with a deep-seated disorder for 38 years, and when Jesus saw him lying there, he said, do you really want to get well? Or are you really serious? Verse 7, the invalid said, sir, oh my gosh, I just love this. Sir, I have nobody when the water's moving to put me into the pool. <laughs> But while I'm trying to come in myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me. <laughs> well, yes, Jesus, I want to get well, but I don't have anybody to put me in the pool. And even when I try, somebody else always gets ahead of me. And you know what? Jesus didn't say, oh, you poor fellow. Oh, bless your little darling heart. I understand. He said, verse 8, get up. <laughs> How many of you see that exclamation mark? Get up. And I love this part, pick up your bed, your sleeping pad, and walk. So he not, he not only said, get up, he said, clean up the mess you made the 38 years you've been living, laying here. Yeah. 
We have to stop feeling sorry for ourselves and we have to stop thinking that the world owes us something. This whole mentality today, this whole um, entitlement mentality, oh my gosh, it, it not only is terrible, but it is so dangerous. Nobody owes me anything. It is not somebody else's fault that my father abused me and they don't have to pay me back for it because God said he would pay me back. He would give me double, double what I forfeited and gave up. But I'm not gonna ever get God's double <laughs> if I keep my bad attitude, my self-pity, my entitlement mentality, the chip on my shoulder, you got to give up the ashes. Come on. And you know, to be honest, when you've, had a, when you've hurt for a long time, there's almost like a deadness that settles in. And I hate to say it, but sometimes when I'm sharing things like this, I, I can look across the audience and I can kind of tell who's getting it and who's not. And because there's a spark of life that comes into people when they're connecting. But sometimes people have been hurt so bad for so long that they just kind of like. <laughs> Stir up your hope today. God's trying to just light one little spark of hope on the inside of you. And hope is the happy anticipation that something good is going to happen. Go on, I double dare you to just have even just a little tiny bit of hope. Faith the size of a grain of mustard seed can move a mountain. Just go ahead and make the devil mad and just say out loud, something good is gonna happen in my life. Yeah. Amen. God promises us transformation, not translation, but transformation. You say, huh? Well, you know, Enoch got translated. He just suddenly wasn't here anymore and he was with God, you know. God doesn't promise us that when it comes to spiritual growth and change in our life. Enoch got translated because he was so close to God he couldn't stay here anymore. I wouldn't mind some of that, but I got a ways to go. Now, what I'm trying to say is, is, you know, you can't get a drive through breakthrough. <laughs> this is not like ordering up a Happy Meal. <laughs> if you want a breakthrough, you gotta go through. You don't drive through, you go through. In 2 Corinthians 3.18, let's go there. Verse 17, now the, the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Freedom from bondage. And all of us, as with unveiled face, and you know, there's a lot of messages here. Bottom line is, when it says unveiled face, it means you, you need to read the Word of God with your grace glasses on, not read it like the law. Because when Moses received the law, even the law left such glory on his face that he had to wear a veil over his face. But now God is saying, if you want to come under this new covenant that I'm giving to you, this covenant of grace, you have to be careful that you don't read everything in here like an I have to, but you read it like, wow, awesome, great, I get to do this, and look at what's going to happen in my life. That so you don't have to pray, you get to pray. You don't have to give, you get to give. You don't have to love people, you get to love people. You don't have to forgive people, you get to forgive people. 
You don't have to be a blessing. You can get up and be a grouch and just make people miserable all the time if you want to. But you don't have to live like that because he came to set us free more than anything from ourselves. Freedom for me now is not having to be upset any longer than seven minutes because my husband buys a race car that I didn't want him to get. <laughs> yeah, you weren't here to hear the Dave story last night. I'm not telling it again. <laughs> well, I will. Dave bought a car I didn't want him to get. <laughs> Come on, let, let's do the tiny version. I'm in bed, almost ready to go to sleep, all cozy. The phone rings. <laughs> Me and Danny, one of our sons, he said, we're at the Ford dealer. I'm like, what are you doing at the Ford dealer? I thought you were going to go hit golf balls. And he's like, well, when we were done, we went to the Ford dealer. And, you know, there's a car here that I'd really like to get. Well, right away, my insides went. Because, <laughs> you know, we've been married a long time. We've been through the car thing a number of times, you know. <laughs> Any of you ladies tracking with me, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, you could drive the same car till the wheels fall off, but, you know. I'm like, you got a, you got a nice car. Are you going to get rid of that car? No. This is, this is a race car. I'm like, Dave, you're 74 years old. Please. What do you need with a race car with these loud pipes on it so when you sit at a stop sign, it just sits there and grumbles? I'm like, don't you think I'm going to look a little ridiculous in this? <laughs> anyway, long story short, it was obvious he really wanted to get it. And Man, I just learned a long time ago, there ain't nothing worth fighting about. I, don't, I do not have the energy to be mad anymore. Is anybody home today? How many of you don't have the energy to be mad anymore about something you can't do anything about anyway? But it is a bit annoying when somebody's doing something that you don't like and they give you a scripture to back it up. <laughs> and you see, the problem was that we didn't have a place in the garage to park the car. And so after we hung the phone up, I'm thinking, where's he going to put it? So I called him back and I said, where are you going to park the car? He said, well, I was thinking maybe you could get rid of your car. <laughs> well just so it don't sound too bad. I don't drive the car anyway, you know, but it's, I mean, it's seven years old and got 12,000 miles on it. Dave bought it for me and it's just a cute little girl car. And, you know, I've, I've said numerous times in the last two years, we should just sell that car, get rid of it. And he's like, no, you don't want to sell that car. I bought you that car. That's your car. I want you to keep it. <laughs> and so when he asked me about, when I asked him about the parking place and he said, well, just I thought we might sell your car. I said, wait a minute. I thought that you didn't want me to sell my car. We've been going over this and over this, and you kept telling me not to sell it. He said, well, the police, he asked, he says, there's a time for all things. <laughs> Come on up. Could some of the ladies say, boo, day? <laughs> yeah, like, go ahead, guys. Tell him, yay, Dave. All right, straighten up. Let's get spiritual again. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is freedom. That I did not have to get mad. That I didn't have to control the situation. That I could not get my way and still be happy. Come on. I'm not broken anymore. He heals the brokenhearted. He binds up their wounds and heals their bruises. He gives them beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and he is a God of justice who gives you a double reward for everything that you lost. Have you been hurt in the past? Do you feel wounded in your soul or like you have a broken heart? You know, God wants to exchange that brokenness for wholeness. He wants to give you beauty for ashes. But you must be willing to give up the ashes. We have to stop looking behind and begin to look to the future. God's got wonderful things in store for you.
Today, we are having a medical camp on behalf of Joyce Mayor Ministries. It's a big event for the village people so that they can receive medication and the love of Christ. That's what is happening here right now. There are so many instances where people who have come here, they have been suffering from those diseases or infections from quite a long, but they never go to a medical help because they don't have a finance even for travel. People are quite receptive to us because they are seeing that we are helping them beyond just sharing the gospel. And you know. This event has been uh, being planned in our minds and hearts for the past two, three months. So the church in Hyderabad is praying and the village church has been praying continuously. And that's what we are seeing that God's grace, everything is going on smoothly. <laughs> Thank you very much for your contribution to India and because of your help, Yo, we are you making us to go every corner, looking every place. And without your support, we cannot go. Met deze mobiele kliniek geven we bij Hand of Hope elke maand nieuwe hoop aan duizenden mensen. Hier krijgen de patiënten alles op één plek: van oogtesten tot röntgenfoto's, tot het verstrekken van medicatie. En dat allemaal dankzij de vele donateurs die dit werk steunen. God teaches us that if we are willing to share what we have, God can multiply that and make it into a lot more than what we started with. So please share. Help ons om andere mensen te kunnen helpen. Bel ons 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meijer.nl slash partner. Elk gebed en elke donatie telt. Samen veranderen we de wereld. In het leven lopen we hier en daar butsen en schrammen op. Sponsor over. Maar sommige beschadigingen kunnen het leven volledig lam leggen. Hoe overwin je woede en bitterheid? Lees het boek van Joyce Meyer. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. En start bevrijd aan je toekomst. Bestel je boek. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. Via joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100.